Today, we're taking a trip back in time to a place that I used to call home. Welcome to Noshar Canals, the infamous Battlefield 3 map that birthed something of a craze back in late 2011 and early 2012, when Battlefield players realised the container area that had been chosen as the Team Deathmatch play zone was the best place to go if you wanted to boil the game back down to its basics. Here you just ran around and shot people, you died and almost instantly respawned. It was a place where you could warm up before joining larger matches of Conquest, or where you could mess around for hours with your friends, experimenting with different weapon loadouts and bringing chaos to the place by throwing copious amounts of grenades around. It was just hell on earth for an unexperienced player, but was an infantry gameplay heaven for the vast majority of players who'd already gotten time under their belts. A couple of weeks back, I found this article on MP First, how Battlefield's most iconic team deathmatch map was made. Instant hook for me, I went straight in and started reading it. The article is an interview back and forth with Nicholas Astrand, the level designer of Noshar Canals and other fan-favourite Battlefield 3 maps, like Grand Bazaar and Damavan Peak. Interestingly, two of my other very favourite maps from Battlefield 3. The interview reveals a lot about the process of how the map went from an idea and some concept images to a fully-blown conquest and rush map that hid away an absolute gem of a TDM area. To begin with, Noshar was just a name and a few pictures, as were all of the maps in Battlefield 3 at some point. It sat alongside countless others at the DICE studio waiting to be picked out as a choice by the dev team and taken forwards as a map that they wanted to build. The description of the map at the time read, Infantry, ground, sea and air vehicle fighting in a large coastal city. Carrier at sea, harbour area, airstrip, city vista, sewer canals, and steep cliffs. Now, most of those initial points were actually met in its final design. The coastal city can be seen off in the distance, the sewer canals flow out into the sea, the harbour area, the airstrip at the far back of the map, the aircraft carrier is out there to sea as well. It is pretty much all there. The coastal city part never became a true feature of the playable map area, but considering that a lot of the other maps within Battlefield 3's launch package were city maps, it made Noshar a little bit more unique. It managed to combine that urban, dense combat of the harbour area with the more open warehouse facilities further back, away from the shoreline. Interestingly, however, the container section of the harbour was not mentioned in the initial map pitch, and it wasn't a core feature at the time. The map evolved during development, and it was later on that the containers made their entrance. And even at that point, it wasn't with the idea of creating some arena-style TDM zone. Here's a quote from Nicholas about that change. The base layout of the container area was built by me not really based on some secret formula copying old maps or other games. I basically placed object after object in the area, building it into something that felt good and that I wanted to play in. To be able to run around, sneak up on enemies in a hide and seek way, but also allow vehicles not only drive around the area, but have a few routes through it as well. I've always built maps this way, on feeling rather than a detailed plan. What feels natural and best in that location? I guess you could look at it as how a painter draws, not always having a plan or a spreadsheet to follow. Reading that quote and then looking at the layout of the containers and the general design of the harbour area, it does become really obvious that it wasn't built by some standardised system when designing multiplayer levels, it was designed by hand. All of the crates sort of sit alongside and on top of one another, but hardly any of them sit uniform to one another. Some have closed ends, some have open ends. Some are really close together, darkening that particular path, and some are open-ended into a wide space, funneling the action somewhat. Certain objects placed around the zone allow you to climb up onto different levels and access other containers, but they only allow you to get so far before your options are then limited again. Nicholas went on to say that even during the closing stages of development, he was still tinkering with the objects and their attributes to make sure the flow through the containers was as fluid as it could be. 
at the end of the project when the team was ramping down and I was again the only designer working on the map, I remember going through the container area multiple times, opening some container doors and closing others to optimise movement flow, adding and moving crates and boxes to extend or limit line of sight, testing jump paths up on elevated positions. I think this area had more opportunity to do mini adjustments than other areas on the rest of the maps. This could be one reason why it works so well. Now, according to DICE's own statistics, shortly after Battlefield 3's launch, around 80% of players were playing Team Deathmatch on Noshar Canals, and 20% were left playing on other maps. That is quite an astounding statistic. Compare that to other games and looking for a really popular map, the example I think of is Dust2 in CSGO, which I assume with my limited knowledge of the game is the map that gets played the most, or at least it's the one that people immediately think of. It's extremely popular and it appears to be played much more than most other maps. That was Noshar Canal's TDM in Battlefield 3. Nicholas said in his interview that the team knew this was an extremely high proportion of players playing just one map throughout the entire TDM map pool, so they knew it was a hit with the community. And what makes this stat even more significant is that Battlefield 3 was also infamous for introducing another map that you might know, Operation Metro, to the community as well. That was extremely popular in its own right, but for Noshar to take 80% of the players for the TDM game mode, that shows you just how well liked the map really was. A map like Noshar Canals, as brilliant as it is, is something that I don't think can ever really be replicated, at least not on purpose anyway. And that's a good thing. Battlefield 4 attempted to replicate the brilliance of the map by adding it to the Dragon Valley remake as a harbour area. But the location lost its magic in my opinion. The team chose not to recreate it on a one-to-one -one scale, and instead chose to try and fix some of the annoyances from the Battlefield 3 original. It just became another TDM map with those changes. Not to mention that Battlefield 4's pacing was entirely different than playing Battlefield 3. That likely played into that changed feeling as well. To this day, looking past Battlefield 3, I'm not really sure there's a map and mode combination that has sparked up and ignited such a huge following the way that Noshar Canals and Team Deathmatch did in Battlefield 3. Battlefield 4's map design took a very different path, and the entire focus of the game moved away from pure, urban, infantry-dominated environments. Propaganda on the Chainlink game mode in the Dragon's Teeth DLC was a good combination, and it was really enjoyable to play, but because it was segregated with the Premium Pass, the lifetime of it was much shorter than Noshar TDM. Battlefield 1 attempted to give players an infantry playground with Fort DeVoe in the French DLC, but the vast amounts of enclosed spaces everybody moving through the hallways of the fort led to creating the home of explosive spam. Noshar had its own tight spaces for sure, and there were plenty of explosive options for you to use in Battlefield 3, but because the tight focus container area only sat in the very, very middle of the play zone, and there was no ceiling to it, those explosions weren't contained as well, and fights were relatively short-lived. Flanking became a huge part of the charm of Noshar TDM, moving around the crates to head off the enemy team spawning in and entering the crates from another side. And Battlefield 5? Well, I'd say the cathedral location within the Devastation map is a good infantry player's paradise, and the town on the Arras map is great for infantry gameplay as well, but nothing even comes close to the Noshar TDM combination at the moment. If you guys are following me on Twitter, you'll know at the moment I'm drumming on and on about something, but only because I care about it quite a lot, and it links into the success of Noshar Canal's TDM. Back when Battlefield 3 launched, and still today in 2018, Noshar Canal's TDM is a popular game mode and map combination. There are plenty of servers that you can find the map running on. That success is because of rented servers, and the will of the community to create their own curated experiences within Battlefield games. 
Of course, at the time of the game launching, DICE were hosting their own official servers for the game, with rotations for Conquest, Rush, TDM, and other game modes. But the community could rent their own servers right from the beginning, add their own mix of maps and modes, and have that sit in the server browser for anyone to join, if anyone else also wanted to play, and thus spawned the 24-7 Noshar Canals TDM servers, where admins would crank up the ticket count and run the server constantly with players just running round and round, spawning, dying, killing people, throwing grenades, parachuting in from spawn beacons, raining down C4 into the crates, and sniping from that goddamn awful crane in the corner of the map. There were so many of these servers that it didn't matter what time of the day it was or what day of the week it was, you could always find a Noshar Canals TDM server to play on, and you still can today. DICE might have designed the best TDM map in the franchise's history with Noshar Canals, but the community made it the best TDM map in history by simply playing it constantly. And now, today, I look at Battlefield 5 that doesn't have this functionality at all, and I wonder to myself why perhaps players are getting bored so easily. If they're not able to carve out their niche within the game, or the people who made the game aren't providing that niche for them by setting up popular map and mode combinations in the multiplayer menus, then perhaps those players simply aren't having the experience that they want to have every time they fire up the game. If they were allowed to create that with their own rented servers, perhaps they'd keep coming back to the game because they'd know there was always an experience there that they could enjoy. So yeah, Not Shark and Owls is pretty awesome, and it was nice to get a little bit more detail about the map as well, considering just how popular it was. And like I said, if you're playing on PC at the moment and you've got Battlefield 3, you can still fire up Not Shark and Owls TDM, and I'd highly recommend giving it a go, because it's definitely a throwback, and Battlefield 3 did have its own issues, but man oh man, is it a good infantry playground. It's just arena-style, chaotic fun, 24-7. If you've got it on PC, just jump in and give it a go. Thank you very much for watching today. MP First article with Nicholas is linked in the description if you want to go and give that a read yourself. And I'd be interested to hear your thoughts down below in the comments section, especially when it comes to rented servers within the Battlefield franchise. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.